the hell do I finish my videos? I literally don't know. I can't remember. This is sad. That's when you know you have not filmed a video in so long when you literally do not remember how you end your videos. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my March wrap up for 2024. I read a total of seven books so without further ado, let us get started. The first book I'm going to talk about is Starling House by Alex E. Harrow and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Opal who lives in Eden, Kentucky which is the home of the recusive E. Starling who was a 19th century author and illustrator of The Underland. She mysteriously disappeared and left behind her estate Starling House. Opal spends her days caring for her younger brother after the unexpected death of her mother. She feels drawn to Starling House and she ends up getting a job as a housekeeper from the current heir of the estate, Arthur Starling. As she begins working there, she starts to uncover the secrets hiding behind the doors of this old estate. This book starts off very slow as we're learning the history of Starling House, which kind of dragged for me, but it definitely does pick up as the story progresses. I can't say that I was particularly interested in the history aspect of this and was bored throughout that part of the story, but I definitely did become more invested as the story progressed. I was not the biggest fan of the footnotes in this. I wish that they had been left out. I think I would have enjoyed the story a lot more without having to jump down to the bottom of the page. The story did feature a slow burn romance, which I actually did really enjoy because it didn't overshadow the rest of the book. I do think that Arthur and Opal balanced each other out very well. Opal was a very unlikable character. She's supposed to be in her late 20s, but she acted more like a 17 year old, so it was kind of hard to get behind some of the things that she was doing. Arthur's point of view was really great to read from. I loved learning more about him as the story progressed. I really liked how the house felt like its own being, and I think that the concept of the beast coming from the house was very interesting. I do think that this would make a great fall read. It has such a spooky, dark atmosphere that I just think it would be the perfect book for that time time of the year, but overall I had a fun time reading it. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next I have Plan A by Deb Coletti and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows 16 year old Ivy who becomes pregnant after a terrible date and she is absolutely devastated. She sets off on a cross country road trip with her boyfriend Lorenzo in seek of an abortion. Along the way she learns of other women's stories that were in the same predicament as her once upon a time. I actually listened to this one on audiobook and I think that the narrator did such an amazing job with this story. I think that this has a very important message about women's bodies and the right to make their own decisions when it comes to their bodies. I do think at times it could be a little bit preachy, but the overall message was a good one. I really liked Ivy as a main character. I think that she was very relatable for a lot of people and you couldn't help but root for her. You really felt for Ivy and what she was going through and all the judgment that she endured because of this situation. I love the support system that Ivy had in her brother, her mom, and her boyfriend Lorenzo. I think that the relationship between Ivy and Lorenzo was so sweet and I loved how vocal he was about his support for her. Honestly, I really wish that this book would become part of the curriculum around the world. I think that it has a very important message to share. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. Next up, I read Sync by Ellen Hopkins and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows 17-year-old twins Storm and Lake who are extremely bonded after they went through some trauma in their childhood. When they are placed in foster care, they become separated, but they try to keep in touch as the story goes on. I have always been a fan of Ellen Hopkins and her verse writing style. I just find it so compelling and easy to read. I think that this book, along with all of her books cover some very dark topics. This one focuses on sexual abuse, homelessness, the foster care system, the juvenile system, along with homophobia in a very respectful way. I really loved the dual point of view between Lake and Storm. I was invested in both of their stories. Both of their stories are extremely heartbreaking and every time they are faced with another obstacle, your heart breaks for them even more, but they are so easy to root for. The ending was very satisfying. I loved the hopeful note to it. I just think that Ellen Hopkins will forever 
be one of my favorite authors. I gave it a four out of five stars. I definitely recommend checking out her work if you haven't, but I mean it's Ellen Hopkins. You definitely have. The next book I have is Jana Goes Wild by Farah Heron, and I gave this one a 3.5 out of five stars. This one follows Jana Suleiman, who has never really felt that she fit in anywhere. She sets off with her four-year-old daughter named Amani to partake in a destination wedding for her two closest friends. She didn't expect the father of her child, Anil Malik, to also be attending. They didn't end on the best terms after she discovered that he cheated on his wife in order to be with her, but she can't deny that she still finds him attractive. To get her mind off of Anil, the Bride Squad creates Jana's Go Wild list, and it's kind of the story of her fulfilling that list. We actually met Jana and Anil in the first book in this companion series called Camilla Knows Best. I I did like them enough in that book, but in this one I can't say I particularly liked Jana, but I also didn't dislike her. I am a sucker for a close proximity, second chance lovers book, but I don't know how I felt about the cheating aspect of this. Jana kind of rubbed me the wrong way at times. I think that she was very immature, and I do think that Jana and Anil had chemistry, and they were very cute together when Jana would allow him to be anywhere near her. I just kind of got bored by the end of it because it was very repetitive. It was a lot of Jana letting him in and then shutting him out and then letting him in and then shutting him out. It's like, girl, pick one. You know what I mean? But I do think that the grand gesture at the end was very cute and I did like how that ended. The Tasmanian setting was incredible and I really loved reading about all the animals that the group saw. I also really loved seeing Camilla and Rohan again. They're just such a cute couple, so overall I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up I have The Meadows by Stephanie Oakes. I gave this one a 3.5 as well. Since she was a little girl, Eleanor has been told that The Meadows is a prestigious academy for the best and the brightest. So after Eleanor receives her letter to join The Meadows, she is ecstatic to leave her small town at the cove, but she quickly realizes that things aren't exactly as they seem. Four years later, she has a government job, but she is also trying to deal with the trauma that came from being at the Meadows, as she is also trying to find out what happened to her friend that disappeared. I like this for the most part, but I do think that it began dragging in the second half. It did pick up again at the end, but I do think that it was very hard to get through because it just seemed that the pacing was a little off. There is a dual timeline in this where Eleanor is at the Meadows and then after her graduation in her first year after exiting. These timeline switches could be a bit confusing because sometimes it would just happen in the middle of a chapter. I listened to this on audiobook, which I do think allowed for the switches to be a little bit easier to follow. It was a little bit terrifying to think about what Eleanor endured at the Meadows and to think about how places like this still exist in the world today, so it was a little bit scary to read, but I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars overall. Next up, I read The Troop by Nick Cutter, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Scoutmaster Tim, who every year leads a group of Boy Scouts into the Canadian wilderness. On their latest weekend trip, they are met with a very ill, strange man while they are around their campfire. A deadly disease quickly spreads throughout the campsite, and the boys must try to survive until they are rescued. This has such rave reviews. People say that it is the most disgusting, terrifying book that they've read, so I really thought that I was going to like this, especially because it is compared to Lord of the Flies. Unfortunately, I did not enjoy it as much as I thought I would. This book is very gory, disgusting, and disturbing, so if that is not your thing, definitely avoid reading it. If animal torture is a trigger for you, then definitely avoid this because it is very heavy on the animal torture, which I was not the biggest fan of, which maybe that's why I was not a fan. It is told through the eyes of the five 14-year-old boys, which I did really enjoy, but being inside Shelly's head was absolutely terrifying, and I would not like to revisit, so I gave it a three out of five stars. Check and then out. I saved the best for last, A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kremer. I gave this a five out of five stars. I have been holding off reading this book for ever, and I don't really know why, because it was so freaking good. It was exactly what I needed at the time. This follows Prince Wren of Emberfall, who, after being 
cursed by an evil enchantress, turns into a beast of mass destruction every year. In order to break the curse, he must make a woman fall in love with him. Harper Lacey is kidnapped from the streets of Washington, D.C. by mistake, and she is brought to Emberfall in the hopes of breaking the curse. I really enjoyed this. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I have been putting it off forever, like I said, which I don't know why, because I loved Defy the Night by this author. Right from the very first chapter, I was so invested in this story and these characters. I loved Harper so much. She is so strong-willed and determined. She didn't let her cerebral palsy get in the way of anything that she did, and she especially did not let people think that she was weak because of it. I really like how she didn't take any bullshit from Prince Ren or anyone else. It broke my heart when the reader found out what her brother and mother were going through. Prince Ren also stole my heart in the end. I love how he would try to outsmart the Enchantress and just completely blow off the curse on some years. I absolutely loved how Prince Ren was convinced that Harper would never love him, so he wasn't even going to try to make her fall. I think that their relationship was so slow burn and it felt so genuine to me. It took a lot for Harper to start trusting Ren, and I loved that they eventually started working together and tried to defeat the Enchantress. I really need to get my hands on the next books in the trilogy. I don't own them, so I really should go purchase them because that cliffhanger... I can't. I need to know what happened. Five out of five stars. I really recommend this series if you haven't already. Well, I guess I can't recommend this series since I've only read the first book, but I definitely recommend the first book. All it's right, really good. All so. right, everybody. So those were the seven books that I read in the month of March 2024. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>